In this video, I'm going to explain what causes watery eyes, as well as sharing how to stop frequent tearing and the number one best remedy for watery eyes that I use in the eye clinic. Let's take a look. Hey eyes and shine there, my friends. Dr. Allen here from the Dr. Eye Health Show, helping you learn everything about the eyes and keeping them healthy. So if you're somebody who struggles with watery, tearing eyes, whether it be in both eyes or maybe just one eye at a time, it can be really frustrating and unsightly. People can often even ask you why you're crying, why your face is always wet. And unfortunately in the eye care community, if you go in to see an eye doctor, sometimes they tell you a weird answer. They'll in fact tell you that you have dry eyes. And you're probably thinking, wait, no, my eyes are not dry, they are wet. And while it is true that sometimes your eyes do water in response to dryness, it is not always the case. And I see a lot of young doctors make the mistake of saying it's dry eye without investigating further of other common causes. And the number one cause of watery eyes that I look for in the clinic is that of a blocked tear duct. And this is something that you can have in both eyes, but I'll tell you, uh, it's something that if you have one watery eye, this is probably my top differential. Because your tears are generated here in the lacrimal gland, and then the tears flow and get pushed by the eyelids when you blink down toward the punctum, and then the tears drain into the nasal lacrimal drainage system here. And ultimately, your tears then flow down and absorb through your nasal mucosa. In fact, that's why when somebody cries, they have a runny nose because their tears flow and then drain out through their nose. However, if there's a blockage anywhere in the nasal lacrimal drainage system here, then tears aren't going to be able to drain. The tears are just going to build up on the eye and then it's going to overflow down the eyelid and down the face. Blockage of the nasal lacrimal drainage system occurs for multiple reasons. It can be just simply age. It can also be due to medical treatments such as either radiotherapy or chemotherapy for cancer. Also some eye drop medications like those for glaucoma, but also largely due to inflammatory reasons such as maybe an infection or blepharitis or buildup of oils and skin cells as well as bacteria on along the eyelids. And I hate to say it, but even dry eye has been implicated as being a potential cause of this. It is also possible for some people to have an active infection of the nasolacrimal sac that we call a decryocystitis. So from infections, people can develop decryocystitis liths, which are small concretions of calcium that build up in the nasal lacrimal system. But otherwise, again, a lot of the blockages occur due to inflammation, and that leads to the frequent tearing or epiphora, which is the medical term for tearing of the eye. In the eye clinic, an eye doctor can often test if there is proper drainage by doing what's called a Jones test, where we put fluorescein sodium in this inferior cul-de-sac here, and then we monitor how fast it's resolving or how fast it's draining. And then if your doctor is concerned that there is a blockage, they can do what's called a dilation and irrigation, where we use a irrigating solution and basically pump that through the nasal lacrimal system so that a salt water saline solution drains and you can taste it in the back of your throat. Oftentimes, if there is a blockage, the irrigation solution will basically push that blockage down and through the drainage canal, and it opens up and basically solves your problem. And I would say that's probably the number one remedy for constant tearing, is just having your nasal lacrimal system flushed. It's pretty amazing to me how many patients will just thank me so much because they finally did this after seeing multiple doctors. I know not every doctor likes to do dilation irrigation, but it's something that I find just helps a lot of my patients. And definitely let me know in the comment section if you've had Add irrigation of your lacrimal system, or if you think it's something you may need. Unfortunately, if we do find that there is a blockage and we can't clear it with the irrigation or something simple there in the clinic alone, then we do have to refer for more invasive surgery to clear that out and find out what's causing it. Now, another common cause of tearing of the eye has to do with drainage issues. And by drainage issues, this could be a couple of things, but it mainly means that tears are not being siphoned along the eyelid over to the punctum to drain correctly in the first place. One of the more common causes I see in older individuals is something called an ectropion. And this can be mild or severe, but this lower eyelid starts to fall away from the globe. And so tears pool up and end up just kind of draining off of the eyelid straight down the face. Another issue that I see more commonly even in young people has to do with what's called conjunctival chalasis. And that's where this clear membrane on the front surface of the eye called the conjunctiva becomes inflamed and redundant. And then it ends up growing over and kind of flopping over the lower eyelid a little bit. And that prevents the tears from properly flowing to the nose. And a lot of times you can tell this just by looking at somebody because the tears aren't flowing here by the nose. Instead, the tears are kind of flowing here by the side of their 
their face. Again, because the tears aren't even allowed to flow toward the nose, they're just kind of hitting that conge and then flowing out. With somebody with an ectropion, typically we do need to refer that for surgery repair. Otherwise, for conjunctival chalasis, we can try conservative treatment by reducing the inflammation on the eye, trying to get that conge to kind of tighten up on its own. Otherwise, a lot of the time, we do also have to refer that out just so that they can excise that conj tissue and then get it to again, tighten up surgically. In addition to these frequent medical causes is that of just allergies. If it is usually springtime or fall, uh, people who have allergic reactions to pollen and other antigens in the air, this can cause irritation to the eyes, causing them to turn red, inflame the eyelids, causing them to swell, as well as the surface of the eye. And then your body just in a reaction creates more tears, trying to flush any of those antigens down to the lac lacrimal sac and get those out of the body. And allergies typically present with other symptoms, right? Including itchy eyes, maybe a runny nose, or sinus congestion, maybe wheezing, uh, hard times breathing, that sort of thing. But oftentimes in the case of an ocular allergy where your eyes are getting puffy, red, irritated, then yes, using lubricating artificial tears can help. Cold compresses are conservative treatment. But right now we have two eye drop medications that are now available over the counter here in the US that work fantastic. One of them is called Padaday and one's called Lastic Caft. They both come in a one day drop formulation that you can buy over the counter and usually it takes care of a lot of the itching symptoms, but also just helps eye allergies kind of resolve overall. Now I'd say for most people, those drops work probably 90% of the time. And finally, yes, dry eye syndrome can be a potential cause for watering, tearing eyes. And again, I know it sounds uh, kind of counterintuitive because you'd think, no, my eyes are watering all the time. How could they be dry? Well, because we've talked about in a lot of other videos, the, the surface of the eye and the tear film is very complex. It depends on a level of balance, a homeostasis of different components all kind of working in the correct way at the right time. And so if your eyes are in fact dry, your body can sense this and we'll try to correct the problem itself by the only way it really knows, and that's to produce more liquid through your tears. However, as we kind of discussed, if your eyes are tearing just on like one side, that usually isn't due to something like dry eyes or allergies. Then I'm thinking more like it's a blocked single tear duct. Or again, perhaps there's a drainage issue with just tears not being able to flow toward the nasal lacrimal duct. Otherwise, there are many treatments for dry eyes, many of which we've covered here on this channel. But some of the easier ones that people run to are just artificial tears, staying hydrated, as well as getting good sleep. There is research that shows uh, even just two nights of decreased rest can result in dry eye symptoms. But hey, if you found value in this video, please hit that like button for me and subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you have a question about anything at the eyes, please let us know in the comment section because I do read those and oftentimes those get turned into future videos. If you do want to learn more about dry eyes or other treatments that you can do at home to take care of your eyes and vision, check out our video playlist right over here. Otherwise, keep an eye on it and we'll see you in the next one.